Hi, this is Jonathan Landeros for Kativ Technologies. In this video, I'm going to share, in no particular order, five assembly tips I think users will find helpful. The first of these tips may sound a bit like cheating if you've seen my video on inventor part tips, but I still think it's a helpful tip in assemblies when placing constraints. And that tip is to use the Select Other tool when constraining components together. This will allow you, while the constraint tool is active, to select obscured component geometry without rotating the assembly. And this tool can be accessed in two different ways. The first is to wait for two seconds. That's the default setting. The second is to right click and choose Select Other from the context menu. Either way, a menu appears that lets you see the potential selection options for the constraint. Just choose the option you want and proceed to the next step. Now, a quick pro tip. If you want to change the delay time for the Select Other tool, you can find that setting in Tools, Application Options, and look on the General tab. Locate the field for Select Other Delay and change the setting to whatever you'd like the delay to be. Typing the word OFF, that's OFF, will turn off the setting completely if you don't want it to appear but I don't recommend turning it off. Now what about times that you need to add a lot of constraints quickly? Inventor has a method that's been around as long as I can remember and that's called the Alt-Drag method. In short, select the geometry to be constrained while pressing down the Alt key and the appropriate constraint can be selected. Drag the constraint to the mating part, release the Alt key and the constraints placed. All done without ever touching the constraint tool. Not a big time saver for a few constraints, but if you have several, that can really add up. The first time I learned about this tip, I was talking to sheet metal users. But I think any user who has to constrain narrow faces can find this little gem helpful. The challenge comes when mating narrow faces together with a mate constraint. It can get a little tricky to pick the edge you want, even with a select other tool. The trick is to switch to the flush constraint, even if that's not the constraint you want to end up with. The flush constraint sees only faces and can act as a filter of sorts, making it easier to choose the desired face. Once you have the face you want, switch back to the mate and carry on. The next tip on the list comes in handy when you've placed several copies of the same part in an assembly and then realize one of them is unique in some way. But if the component's already been placed and constrained, how can you quickly swap for a new copy without having to redo a bunch of constraints? On the Assembly tab, expand the flyout on the Productivity panel and locate Save and Replace Component. You'll be prompted to save the file under a new name, creating a new part. This will also replace the original with the new copy that was just created. The best part of this tip is the assembly constraints are maintained and any of the changes that make this part unique can now be added just like the part had originally been created there. The final tip is a group of tools that was first introduced in Inventor 2014. These tools add new ways that assembly constraints can be viewed and interacted with. The first tip in this group is actually a new spin on the free move command. Before, free move would just move a component temporarily overriding any constraints that held it in place. Now, free move creates rubber band links that show how constraints interact with the components, including glyphs that show the type of constraints being used. Right-clicking on the constraints will show tools such as Edit, Suppress, Delete, and Modify, allowing you to make changes without going back to the assembly browser and locating the constraint there. And now that we've pulled the assembly apart, just hit the Update tool and the components will go back where they belong. Other tools available from the ribbon next to the Constraint tool are Show, which allow you to display glyphs showing constraints for a selected component, and then Hide, which will turn off the glyphs and prevent them from cluttering up the screen. And finally, if there are any constraints in conflict, using the Show Sick constraints will turn on glyphs for any constraints that have issues and make it easier for you to properly address them. So if you are on a version of Inventor 2014 or newer, take a look at these tools. They're definitely worth taking a look at. 
So there you are, 5 Tips for Inventor Assemblies. That's it for this video, and thank you for watching.